What is up, my car loving friends? You're not seeing this. It's not going to come up in a future video, trust me. You'll never see this again. But I'm really excited because today what we're going to do is we're going to pull the dash off and refinish it. It's a lot of hard work. It's going to be epic. But hopefully, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So we'll see how it turns out. I do want to take a second and say thank you guys very much. This channel is finally monetized and I made 44 cents over the last four days. That's absolutely awesome. If you're not subscribed, it's totally free. Take a second and subscribe to the channel. It definitely ensures that inevitably we'll maybe make more than 44 cents in a month and it can partially pay for stuff like this. So if I could ask you a small favor, just subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and pull that dashboard out. wondered how to take your dashboard out of your E23 BMW and I suspect it probably is pretty much the same for an E24. Not again. An E28. Nope. And maybe even the E30. Nope. Well we're gonna find out today. Why am I taking the dashboard out? There are three big reasons. The first reason is we pretty much get a puddle on the passenger side floor whenever we run heat in the car which tells me the heater core is probably leaking. <laughs> The heat only really functions in the footwell. We don't get anything from the air vents up top, which means some of the vacuum pods need to be reconditioned. And number three is our new ECU. It is currently just hanging down there. It's supposed to go in that hole. Got he! <laughs> and having this dash out would give me a lot more ease of figuring out exactly where and how I want to mount this thing. Pull that off. Boy. I may end up mounting it underneath the top of the glove box. We just don't know. But I'll be able to move the cables around, do things a heck of a lot easier when the dashboard is not in the car. So how does this work? The gauge cluster has to come out. The sensor light cluster has to come out. The stereo has to come out. The AC unit comes out all as one unit. And then this panel here has to get pulled back a little bit. Oh, and the glove box has to come out. And then there are a total of six bolts that hold on the dashboard. The other thing is, what's the sense in doing this if we're not going to repair this dashboard? I really hope it works. Don't know if it will. Nope. But we're gonna check it out and uh, see if we can't refinish this dashboard as well. Enough of the talking, let's get to working. First thing we gotta do is take this steering wheel out. Just get a screwdriver in behind here. And then pop the little BMW logo out. Pop goes the weasel, cause the weasel goes pop. Careful not to actually lose it down between the seats. And then we just have a bolt. And the steering wheel is locked, so it isn't going anywhere. It's a 22 millimeter. Just like everything else, BMW, there is a washer in there. Steering wheel removed. All right, so next we have the binnacle here, and there are four bolts right up in here, most of which are probably actually missing. Oh, there's only three. One, two, three. So you just get a little screwdriver up in here. Up in here. And then all you have to do is use a little flathead, kind of pry it out. That crack in here is my dashboard because it's pretty old and beat up. Not in great shape anymore. And we're going to fix that too, hopefully. It likes to fall back into place. That's what she said. And there are some wires on the back of this that you obviously have to disconnect. In order to pop these clips off the back, you have to pop this up and then they pull right out. And then when you put them back in, push these down and it locks them in. And there's three of them. There's these two and this one. And the other two plugs, this one and this one, they just plug right in. So they're pretty simple. Okay, so there are four bolts all the way in the back and then there are two bolts on each side of this that hold the arms up. Back here are the four bolts 
and then up here on either side of the other four. Now we can see the ECU is supposed to go down this little channel here. It's not doing so as well as I would hope. So we're gonna have to come up with a solution or possibly mount it up here, which is the thing we can do. There's already these two mounting points right here and we can make something maybe and maybe just mount it up here. We got a lot more work though to get this dash out. We're getting really close. Now, you might be asking yourself, self, why is Michael taking off all of the side trim to get the dashboard out? Well, let me show you. Let me show you something! So, there is a bolt right in here, and a bolt right in here that you can only get to when you take that trim out, because this has to come off, because these have to come off. And I'm guessing there's a bolt right in there. That's why we had to take that other trim off. And besides that, this headliner, no, it's a travesty. It really just needs needs newness. So we're gonna we're gonna replace the headliner. It maybe doesn't drop so much dust on my head all the time while we're driving. So there you go. Two birds with one stone. So the front sunroof cover right here is held on by these, one on each side, and then these sunroof bolts that come through here. And really that's all that holds it on. It's in there tight. Tight! I tell you, yeah. Except for this, which I can't figure out how that works. So I'm not sure we're gonna be able to actually get this out or not. But I'm not really worried about it right now. I'm worried about getting these out so we can remove the dash. And the only thing holding those in is a little screw right back there. So we're gonna try to get something in there, get that little screw out without damaging this, and then we should be good. So let's do that. So you may be wondering why I've basically finished the sanding because of, obviously if I was going to paint this, we can't have imperfections like these cracks here and here and that sort of stuff. The intention of this exercise was to make this flat and to have the cracks that crowned up sanded down and flat. Because we're not actually going to paint this dashboard, we're going to cover it with leather. It fits pretty good. This was physically made for this vehicle and it's gonna be pretty forgiving. We're not gonna to have to worry about cracks and that sort of stuff. We just have to glue it down, make sure it's everything is positioned properly and we're gonna we're gonna be good to go. So it's gonna take a little bit of time and effort and energy to make sure that this is where it's supposed to be. And then obviously these rear vents have to be cut once it's glued down. So I can keep pulling and stretching uh, and fitting and pulling and stretching and fitting. That's what she said? <laughs> all day long, probably, and <laughs> this won't get done. I've spent about the last hour pulling and stretching and fitting. It actually fits pretty good. Say what now? Since I've never done anything like this. Do it! And this is pretty expensive. Yes, you can! Needless to say, I'm a bit nervous. Do it! About going in there, gluing it down, and doing all that stuff. Just but, do it! At some point, you get to the point where you just gotta do it. And we're at that point. So we're gonna start here with the binnacle. Nothing is impossible! And we're gonna glue that piece down and we're gonna finish up this end and the back and then we're gonna do the other half. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's my hope, that's my plan. Let's see how it goes.
fucking too bad. I'm getting there. So I think it looks pretty good. Is it perfect? No, I'm definitely not an upholsterer. But for an amateur guy trying it for the first time, I don't hate it. If somebody comes to a car show, gets a chance to take a look at it, well, you're definitely gonna see the flaws. However, it looks a lot better than it used to. I like it, I like it. And it was a fun job putting it all back in and taking it all out, not so much fun. But refinishing it was a lot of fun. So this video is the first part of a series of three. The second one is going to be refinishing the headliner. And if you told me that I was gonna be sewing when I bought this car a year ago, I would have said, you're crazy. <laughs> but it actually happened and I can't wait for you to see the results. I also replaced the heater core, so that's going to be one of the two videos that you're gonna see very soon. And that is a serious adventure. If you ever thought about how you change the heater core in one of these cars, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. But why would I go and spend all this time, energy, and ridiculous sums of money on an old beater like this that's really not worth anything? Not this again! It can only be for the love of cars. And if this moron can figure out how to do stuff like this, I know you can too. So go out there, find that car that you always wanted, pick it up super cheap and get it back on the road. And I'll see you guys in the next video.